All right. So our next run is Crystalis or Crystalis. I don't know. What, how do you say it over Swarm? Crystalis. Crystalis? Only Crystalis. Only Crystalis. It's like Chrysalis, just with a T. I see. So we have here myself. I am the Axe Man, and I made this task. Um, I made this task many years ago. So this is sort of an oldie but goodie. I was reviewing this, and it was like, how did I think of that? So I think this is going to be a fun one to show. And, and on the line here, we have Overswarm, who is the current world record speedrunner. And I'm very honored to have uh, this be the second event tonight uh, featuring myself and my task with the world record speedrunner. Um, this is going to be really cool. Um, so, yeah, if we're all ready, let's get going. I'm ready. Okay. So, um, the task timing is a little different, you know. For a real-time run, you would start out, you would get to put in your name, because your name doesn't affect any of the timing. Um, and then you would actually start the timer, like when you hit start. Um, but in the task, you know, we start from the input. So I found out it's, it's faster, you just hit continue. And things are going to happen pretty fast. Um, it's, not a, it's not allowed to start in the continue for the speed run, so you lose about 15 seconds waiting for the animation. <laughs> yeah. You're already way ahead. Um, so... We, we get the sword right away. If you're not familiar with this game, it's like an action RPG. It's near the end of the NES cycle. And so it's very complicated, um, very high action game. Um, and for compared to a lot of NES games, I mean, you've got uh, two dimensional movement, overhead view, um, a lot of fast action. So this is um, near the end of the, the, really the high end of NES games. Yeah, I always tell people this is like almost a better Zelda. Uh, a lot of people consider that blasphemous, but I refer specifically to the first Legend of Zelda. It's a great game, but it was a little slow, it was a little clunky. Yeah. Uh, and this one is very fast paced in comparison. Yeah. Um, and so part of that, uh, part of that kind of advanced uh, advancement there makes it so that it's actually hard for to emulate properly. So we're ha we have trouble um, replaying this on console, but so we're playing this through on the emulator now. We think it's pretty close. Um, you know, you're never really sure how close the lag patterns are. Um, but one of the differences between running this game in a TAS and running it, uh, you know, for real is that the we really are able to do a lot to cut the lag in a TAS. Yeah. And I actually studied this TAS uh, obsessively. Like that right there where you damage boosted through that slime, all of the lag reduction. Uh, I used your Lua script where you could see hitboxes and like nice. see like stuff like lag frames. Um, and you, you can apply some of it. Uh, a surprising amount of what you did in the task influenced uh, what I did when I was looking for time saves in the actual speed run. Oh, cool. So we got the level up right before in the cave. One of the, the main mechanics in this game that kind of slows down any sort of run is that you have to get to a certain level before you can kind of even land any damage on enemies in sort of the next area. So we needed to hit level two before we entered this cave or else we just wouldn't be able to hit any of the enemies. You hear this like tinking sound. And that's going to be kind of a recurring theme where we're going to have to, you know, either grind we're going to avoid grinding and hit the enemies, you know, as we go, um, which is another optimization that I sort of like um, really am able to hit in the task here. Um, a lot of enemies that are kind of in these in these hallways or as we go, uh, some enemies spawn right when you enter the room and other ones spawn on sort of this timer. And I'm able to in a task, it's much easier to kind of like keep track of that timer to a really high level and kind of get more enemies spawning. Yeah, so it's always kind of funny watching this task because even in the task, you still do the little run around in circles things, like waiting <laughs> just a moment to ensure that enemies spawn. If you watch the speed run, it looks like we're wasting time constantly yeah. because we just walk to the edge of a wall and we move around in a circle twice, but we're burning time to ensure that the next enemy spawns because missing even one enemy uh, in this speed run is just a nightmare. And so, you know, in the tasks, I would do that more, except one of the things I'm doing is I'm going back and forth. When, and part of the optimization is looking, hey, I'd have to wait here to spawn another enemy. Let's go back and use some of that time to cut some lag. Um, one of the things you can do is just go a little slower, fight a little slower, 
which seems, you know, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but by going slower, you cut the lag and the timer keeps going, so you can actually, um, uh, you have, like, no wait. When you, so when you actually come to kind of the point where you needed to spawn the enemy, it's already spawned because you kind of waited earlier to cut lag. Yeah, and uh, I remember reading your task notes uh, where you talked about doing lag reduction. I had never really thought about lag in this game because you see it a few times, but yeah. never enough to really notice it. Not like uh, a lot of platformers on the NES. Yeah. Uh, but later on, when we get the water sword, you'll see the Medusa section. And yes. uh, that section in particular, I changed uh, Dragon Dark's previous world record route. He grinds in a totally different spot than I did. And the thing that made me think about that uh, was both the danger of his grind spot, I died there a lot, and also your task talking about lag reduction and me always noticing lag uh, with those giant Medusa sprites. Yeah. And so you actually were the, the push that <laughs> brought that change. It actually was a pretty significant time save. So another thing, th there's a lot of glitches in this. Um, one of the things we did earlier was um, we, we shop glitched. So we cheated the shop out of, um, uh, basically we bought the items for free. You can actually, technically what you're actually doing is you're swapping the prices. But if you've got a blank spot in the shop, then you can get it for free. Um, but there's even more glitches than when I made this task. I mean, I need to go do and, and redo this task, even though, you know, there's, there's so many more tricks. And a lot of them were discovered by Overswarm here. Yeah, I, I took this game apart. And that uh, fight you did with Stom, uh, so if you've never played this game, what you're normally supposed to do there is basically lose three times. It gets easier each time you fight him and push him up uh, to the wall. Um, but you can just warp boots your way out, but you have to warp boots to leaf. And then you have to warp someplace else. And so it takes up slots in your inventory. And it's a huge time uh, time waster. And I saw the task just beat him in one shot. I was like, okay, I'm going to figure out how to do this. And I could not. This yeah. is another thing I tried to emulate. Um, all of these mushrooms are spawning at the perfect time for the task because task. Uh, <laughs> but if you watch the speed run, we actually go way far up and then way far down. And it's because we don't want to miss a single enemy spawn. Um, yeah. But watching this, like I always just think, if somebody figures this out, <laughs> somebody just has a timer that's going to be the largest single time save. Like they would yeah. get world record immediately. It's got to be so it's very precise. There's basically this timer that's always running, and you can't see it at all. So if you knew what it is when you start and you kept it track of it from the beginning of the game, you could you know do it, which is basically how the task works. But um, you know it, this um, it's a 8-bit counter, so 256, it keeps counting, and at certain points on that timer, and the enemies spawn. And if that slot is, if the enemy slot is empty, and the enemies, you know, in the spot that they spawn isn't on screen, then they spawn. So you want to make sure that the enemy isn't there, and that they're, um, that they're dead, so that they can spawn again. Um, and it's very, kind of pretty precise sometimes. Another issue is, the, those coins that the enemies drop. Um, so we're not going to need like money <laughs> to buy stuff in this task, but we're picking up these coins uh, and going out of our way a little bit sometimes because you need that coin picked up in order to um, spawn an enemy. Yeah, the, the coins can take up uh, spawn slots, and this is something that is affecting the actual speed run. Like You don't have to be moving at the speed of light for that to uh, actually affect you. Um, you'll watch, uh, like myself or any of the other speedrunners speedrun this game and we'll go to pick up a coin and miss it. And we're like, dang it, because now <laughs> it's like a roulette. Uh, and we're wondering like, is that enemy going to spawn? Is our route going to be messed up? Mm -hmm. And watching this task now, like I'm like, you, you say, oh, we're missing all these glitches, but I, I'm just like kind of marveling at how ahead of its time, uh, it really was because like the mushroom grind that you did on the left side, uh, at the time you made this, we did the grind on the right side. And we transitioned to the left. We figured out how to do it. But the task was way ahead of us. And <laughs> really, we're just catching up with what you've done. That's right. So when I, I think when I made this task, the, the world record was probably, what, like, uh, like over an hour, an hour or eight or something. And then I made this, and there's all these new glitches. And uh, Dragon Dark got it under an hour. But now, with the new glitches, um, it's now under... Uh, what, what do you have, under 45? Have you gone under 50, 55 minutes? I have. Yeah, I got a 58.01, and I said, 
Finally, I got the world record. I beat Dragon <laughs> Dark's time. It was by uh, just a little bit, like 13 seconds. It was really close. And then the day after, I found a glitch that cut off like several minutes. And Dragon Dark, to his credit, he was about to do a run of Crystalis live for an event. It was RPG Limit Break, I think. That's right. I was and, there. Yeah. And he, in a day, in one day, he <laughs> watched my run, learned the route, found an improvement, and then ran it live. Uh, it was really impressive. Like he just said, all right, let's do it. And he just <laughs> spent all of his time in the practice room, <laughs> learned it all in one sitting. Yeah. yeah. So the record's now down to 54.29, uh, and there's still some more time to shave off. And watching this run, the thing that uh, makes me the saddest, you, you see when uh, the hero guy is like stuttering while he's walking and his sword keeps coming out for just a second. The reason he's doing that is that he's charging his sword. But in this game, you can't charge while moving. And so much of the time save that the TAS has is because you're able to use these projectiles. I really wish we could find a way to somehow implement that regularly in a run. Like, we try to do it, but it doesn't quite work out the same. Yeah. I mean, one thing you can do is sort of like when you first press the B button, you may get, you can see whether the first um, charge uh, slot there, that might light up. And then you can kind of like release it and press it again and so you can get one slot, but, you know, you, you can't kind of, like, keep doing it. You'd have to release it, so you can only release it for one frame at a time. Which, I guess, no, that's how, um, that's the same as the glitch, well, no, it's because that's the same as the glitch for, um, for uh, Link to the Past for hovering, isn't it? A little bit. Uh, there's just a lot more of them in this one. Yeah. And, uh... So here we have another really cool glitch that you can't do. <laughs> you can. You can. I, I did some work on it. Okay. Uh, but it's not worth it. Um, <laughs> so you can actually do this uh, Rabbit Boots menu glitch uh, using the Warp Boots, and it makes it a little bit easier to do it, like RTA. Okay. Uh, but this Soldier Grind, not worth it. No. <laughs> uh, doing this as a human is almost impossible. Um, and I do want to point out that... Uh, the section with the giant slimes that we just passed before he went up this giant ice fall, um, I, I found a glitch that allows you to take out a barrier. Um, and so you can progress through the story way earlier than you need to, but you still need the levels. And so we have different grind spots we have to do. So uh, even with uh, even with this new glitch, like getting here early still means we would have to fight these soldiers. So we, we can't do that. It, <laughs> it's hard. It's almost always a time loss. So yeah, there's a few like really subtle tricks here. The you can, if you get to the side of the soldier, their their sword, the hitbox for their sword is actually really small. So there's like a two frame window where you can avoid their their attack and still hit back at them, um, and that's kind of one of the main tricks. The other trick is using the rabbit boots, but the the rabbit boots are sort of uh, you know tricky because. If you the the moment that you land, if you land on their sword or on them, you're gonna take damage. And these guys hit pretty hard, especially when you don't have any armor, which is part of why this is not really viable. Yeah, I I tried for a while, um, and what I found is that you could basically only kill the uh, kill the soldiers going straight up or straight down. Like you can get what you're doing right here, uh, pushing them all from the side, getting them to the end exit, re-enter, push them all to the top, enter, and just keep doing that on loop. But it's not nearly as fast as just the traditional methods. Yeah. Yeah, this kill Basque fight uh, actually doesn't look too different in a TAS, <laughs> except you have the tornado. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's it's pretty neat watching, uh, watching the TAS and seeing what is duplicated exactly in the speed run and what isn't, because there's actually a fair amount of overlap between the two. And there's still this middle gray area where the task does something. I'm like, I think we can do that. <laughs> we just haven't implemented it yet. So, um, you know, the, the boss fights are pretty highly manipulated. And of course, and that's going to come up, you know, that's this last boss, not a big deal. But um, some of the bosses coming up, um, you know, being able to manipulate them makes a really big difference. Um, yeah. So the glitch. If you ever find a uh, RTA Carmine uh, manip? I would love to see it. <laughs> so he never throws the slime thing. There, there might be ways to do it, but it, it, it would it would have to be pretty precise. 
um, you know, because like pretty much every th there's okay. So the RNG in this game, there's some things are based on that clock, that same clock that controls the enemy spawning. There's other things that are based on this kind of secondary RNG that only goes through 64 numbers. Um, and actually, it's it's kind of like a really simple RNG. It just it just cycles through 64 numbers, and there's like three numbers. There's one spot where there are like three numbers within a, almost in a row that like are really low and then you get this thing like the enemies shoot at you or the blobs congeal. So the RNG controls things like these Medusas shooting, which we don't want them to shoot because it's really laggy. So much lag. So much lag. See like there, it's okay because we weren't scrolling the screen. It's like if you're scrolling the screen and there's multiple things going on and they shoot, then it gets bad. Um, so yep. I'm doing things like making sure they shoot off screen i stole this what you're doing right here <laughs> pushing them i stole it i don't think it's in the current world record run but i still regularly do it if i got the right movement okay uh, but you can push these medusas all the way to the water sword spawn and they give a significant amount of experience they give 50 experience each and so any extras you can push up there they stay there and then as you can see here they respawn yeah um and here's that grinding spot that i talked about earlier uh for the task it's very easy but these Medusas have giant hitboxes, even larger than their sprites. Uh, and it's very difficult to fight these guys without taking a hit. Three hits with no armor and you're dead. Uh, and you can see how much damage they did from that deliberate damage boost there. Yeah. The, um, so that, that spot is really ideal for the task because there's a lot of them spawning in kind of a very small area. So I can kind of like go back and forth and respawn a bunch of them at a time. Um, but... If you're if you're you know not doing that, then it's kind of like it's pretty dicey because that's they they hit hard. They they can shoot if they shoot you with their um their shot pair um turns you to stone, and if you turn to stone, you're probably gonna die. Yes, one hundred percent. Occasionally, you get frozen with your sword out, and they just run to your sword, and that's yeah. nice. But even then, the run's done because you spent too long uh, as a statue. Now, to get, you know, for the world record pace, like, you have to be, it has to be pretty much perfect now compared to yours. But I can tell you that with just a little bit of practice, you can actually get sub-hour in this now. Um, and I can tell you, you don't need that much practice because I was able to do it. Um, as, as a human, I've yeah, actually would... accomplished a sub-hour run. Yeah, if you look on speedrun.com, there are actually uh, two tutorials. Um... So if you look under the guides on speedrun.com, there's two tutorials that I've made. Um, one is just everything I knew at the time I made it. And the other is just a one hour long safety slash route for sub hour. Uh, I think my run was like almost exactly one hour. Um, but if anyone's watching this and saying, this game actually looks neat, I never knew about this. Uh, go to speedrun.com and join the Crystalis Randomizer Discord. Like there's a big community, surprisingly, for That's right. this game. I'm a, and in fact, I'm actually really into the rando. It's one of the, you know, when I'm streaming, uh, you know, these days when I'm streaming myself, um, that's usually what I'm streaming. Um, and I'm, I've, uh, I've, I played in the tournament and I got to the finals against Dragon Dark. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't quite pull it off on him, but I, I did, uh, I did pretty well in that tournament. I mean, getting to the finals and having Dragon Dark as your opponent—that's that's a success in of itself. <laughs> he's he's really good. He's, he's really good. good. He's really good at a lot of games. Um, so this part of the game, we got these two caves that we've got to go through. Um, the first cave that we went through, we didn't actually have to go through that cave right away, but it works out really well in the route. Like it's closer. And by going through the caves here, we get some experience killing these enemies on the way. And that's going to mean fewer enemies that we have to just grind later on. Um, that level up that we just got is enough. That's a level that we needed to kind of hit the enemies in the next area. But we're going to keep killing enemies as we go. Just because we're getting that experience now, we won't need to get it later. Yeah, uh, experience routing is kind of the gate both for the speed run and for the task. Uh, like there is a ROM hack that takes that away. Like you don't need a level to damage enemies, uh, but that hasn't really become popular for runs. Uh, everyone just plays vanilla or the randomizer. And it's it's part of the reason that I love watching this task is because it, it really is so close to the real run. Like the same enemies uh, 
the same enemies that you kill, the same route generally. There's a few small differences. Most of it's just execution. Yeah. And the um, the randomizer is really slick. Um, it has this um, really neat system where it scales everything based on the number of key items you get. So as you get key items, um, the enemies become stronger. The, the, and the enemies also, um, they, they become stronger, they hit harder, but they also give more gold and experience. So you kind of, as you progress through the game, you're able to get the experience faster um, rather than having to sort of just uh, fight uh, enemies anywhere. And that, all, that's, that actually works really well for the rando because you're not going to be, you know, going through the game in the same, you know, uh, through the same parts of the game at the same time. Yeah, I uh, I play the rando quite a few times with uh, True Blue eighty three. Currently has third place on the leaderboard for the uh, main category for this game. And when we played it, like we, we raced, quote unquote. Uh -huh. But really, we were just kind of having fun playing the game again. Uh, it's one of the few randos that I've played that it it almost feels like you're playing casually again. Uh, it's just you have to use your knowledge of the game. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and um, the site is it's crystallisrandomizer dot com. Um, hopefully someone can type that in chat. And um, you'll get the link to our Discord. Um, kind of most most of the people that speedrun this game will be on that on there too. So this is the any percent um, no wild warp run. Um, the other runs, so, so there's like other runs where you can like, uh, uh, the wild warp is like this debug controller shortcut where you can warp between 16 different points throughout the world. And that uh, it gives you a way to uh, kind of just warp to the end. It's sort of my personal, you know. my personal favorite. It's my personal favorite one to run. No it one is... else cares about it. I'm the only one who's ever run it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still route it once a year. I try to find everything new. I, I do. Yeah, it, yeah I, it'd be fun to, to route a task on it too. But tasking this game is so complicated. Like um, one of the things that's that may not be obvious is that. There are no subpixels in the movement. Um, the way the movement is calculated, it, there's this counter that increments every time you move, uh, every time you like move a step. And if that number is like even or odd, that controls how many whether you you move like one or two pixels. So the, uh, I guess so it's different on the dolphin. The dolphin moves a little faster. Um, on dry land, your character, if you're moving up, down, left, or right, then he moves two pixels every step. But if you're moving diagonal, he moves one pixel up and down, and then two pixels. So it's one pixel, two pixel, one pixel, two pixel. And if you look at that counter, you can see when you're going to get the two pixel move. And so you can take the two pixel up or down, and then take the two pixel diagonal, and avoid the one pixel diagonals. And so, so you're moving at light speed. Yes. And that's actually a pretty, that's one of the significant gains actually in this run. On the dolphin, sometimes you get three, um, three pixels for your horizontal or vertical movement. Oh, fake flight, my favorite glitch in the game. Yeah. How did, okay, so right here, you're about to yeah. have the dolphin reappear. How yep. do you make the dolphin reappear? I never got that to happen consistently. Yeah, I, I actually, I don't, I didn't understand exactly how it happens. It has something to do <laughs> with like going up the waterfall and then coming back down a little bit. But I think it may have something to do with how you trigger the ghetto flight in the first place. So I, I didn't actually calculate it. I just kind of, when I did it, I was able to get it to happen. And it saves a little time because the dolphin's faster. So you get the dolphin mm -hmm. on the top of the waterfall. Now you can ride him in and, and, and get up there faster. Yeah, I, I have a secret list of time saves uh, that I, I just have waiting for me the next time I try to <laughs> lower this time. And one of those on that list is uh, having the dolphin at the waterfall. And it's not because of the speed, but because it saves your magic. Uh, ah. And in the real run, um, you, you don't say on the dolphin you're flying or it thinks you're flying. And flight in this game costs mana. Uh, so whenever you're floating, your MP is just steadily dropping. By the time you get to the next town, your MP's at zero, so you might as well use an in, and you lose like six, seven seconds. Yeah. Uh, and I would like to just skip that in entirely. But you can't do it until you can get the dolphin there. That's the big time save. So in this task, we haven't gone to the in at all. We just keep going through. Um, but in the speed run, you're going to need the in more to um, yeah. yeah to heal yourself. 
there's a healing Maybe. spell that we got. It was the first spell we got, like right before we went in that first cave. Um, but we're not going to use it in the in the task. Yeah, we we don't use too many ends uh, left in the main run. I, I, think I mean, like if you're going for three. the world record, if you're yeah. uh, if you're sort of just running it, you know. When I did my hour, my sub hour run, I think I hit the in almost every safety save, like because I need it. <laughs> oh, it's per it's perfectly viable for uh, a sub hour run. Like th this is one of those games where a time loss, like might sound big if you're going for a world record, but for just a good run, you can oh, go to yeah. the in every time you see one, and it you're never gonna worry about money. You're never gonna worry about time because like really six seven seconds in the course of like an hour long run, that's nothing. So if if you think uh, if you think I'd like to speedrun this game, but I I need the in, I need armor. You can route all that in. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. So at that run at RPG limit break, um, you know, Dragon Dark was able to sit down and crank out a sub hour run with with fairly little practice at this route. I mean, there's a lot of things that aren't different um, from this point on. It's mostly the same. Um, this is actually one of the really cool tricks. Um, so I figured this out. Um, I was looking at where to get experience because this is a certain point in the game. You need a lot of experience and there's not a lot of good spots. And I saw, well, wait a minute. There's this enemy that's, so he's an initial spawn. He spawns right when you enter the room. But if you just go down into that room, you're going to get hit. Um, but if you jump with the rabbit boots, you can actually jump over him. And so it was a, a clever trick I discovered. And it's actually... Um, it takes a, it's sort of like a little pattern you've got to figure out to do it on, in real time, but it's possible. It's, just, yeah, it's, a, little... it's a surprisingly technical grind. And yeah. With the task, like you move up to the left side and you kill him and then you move through. Yeah. Um, and I found that there was a faster way to grind him, like RTA, uh, by going straight at him, but just slightly off. Because of the task, you can hit him every free moment as you're yeah, moving. Yeah. But we can't do that RTA. Like if you go up to the side, you're missing sword swings. And uh, it's a time save that I still have yet to implement perfectly in a run, like not once. So I don't know if I'll ever do it, but it, it's a huge time save waiting because you save so much time just not walking diagonally to the side. And I, I also love how the task just routes in things like these eyeballs, which we don't uh, in the main run. Because these it's eyeballs too are also in, like the like the Medusas. They have that same stone shot, and so and they're also they hit pretty hard. They're just not a very friendly enemy to get experience on. Yeah, that warp, uh, skipping the dialogue there. So if you haven't played this game after you get the Sword of Thunder, they give you this whole story uh, like exposition dump, but you don't need that in the task. So you like perfect menu and were able to uh, warp there. I haven't implemented that in a run yet. Well, uh, the thing is, we're, we're not really going to avoid that menu because here we get the dump anyway. The wise men aren't there, but we get the, we get all the dialogue. Uh, and this was the manipulated fight I was talking, or the first, <laughs> the first of the manipulated fights. <laughs> give me that fight, please. <laughs> so there's a there's a power up for the sword of water that gives you like this awesome attack that has like uh, all these balls spinning around and damaging everything around you, and it makes that fight a lot easier. But it would take a few more seconds to get it. It only saves a few seconds, but you know, it's a task. I mean, so. I actually I, I looked into killing him with a sword and I was able to do it faster than with the bracelet of water, but it was like maybe one out of fifteen times. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's only totally if it up lines up. And the yeah, other it's thing totally here. Up to him. So here's another experience boost. I'm killing these uh, insects. And getting this to line up, like you have to enter this cave at a certain time on that, you know, on that um, timer, that two hundred that one that two hundred fifty six counter that spawns the enemies. You've got to enter at a certain time and you've got to keep killing the, these insects, which are really annoying, they keep flying around, and their um, their their poison uh, paralyzes they paralyze you. Paralyze you, yeah. It's, and you need to be able to charge. Paralyze in this game prevents you from charging, and you need that for the ice bridges. It's it's awful because recover in this game, which you won't see in the task, has a really long animation, and, and it takes what twenty three m. It's, it's a lot yeah. of MP, too. It's a lot of MP. It, you have to menu twice because uh, you have to turn it on and you have to turn it off to back to whatever you were going to do. Um, and there's a whole long animation and then a pop-up window after that says, hey, the poison's gone. And you're like, I know, let me play. <laughs> now, if you look at my MP count now, it's at three. We're going to yeah, hit it pretty it close here. Like a, now it looks like a real normal speed run. 
Yeah, in fact, so the thing is, we're going to get a full heal in a little bit if we can just make it through the next boss, which actually isn't so hard. Um, the thing is, we just got an item called the Power Ring, which increases our attack power so much. Um, we're able to kill these enemies pretty easily, and this boss is going to also go down pretty fast. I am really surprised that you get the Power Ring and the task early. Like, I know it speeds up the bosses, yeah. but... Uh... I'm, I'm surprised it speeds them up that much because I, I remember looking into it and it was pretty close for me. Uh, it's not RTA. a whole lot on the bosses, but on the next grind, the spider grind, that's where mm -hmm. we save. Um, and the thing is, it wouldn't, um, I guess it, it wouldn't take that, it wouldn't save that much time to get it with flight. So it's actually... Uh, Oh, yeah. It saves like a minute uh, to uh, get it with flight, but you do lose a lot of time like in the spider grind and things yeah. like that. Yeah, so you lose uh, time with the spider grind. You lose time killing those enemies in the first area, in Kelbesk's area there. Mm -hmm. The soldiers. And Sabera. Yeah, Sabera and... Sabera coming up. She that's gets right. to move if you don't have the power ring, and yeah. that's the worst thing ever. Um, and then also Mado, of course. I don't yeah. think the quick kill would be... <laughs> yeah. Not, not quite as quick. Yeah. You don't want to fight Mado legit uh, at any point. He's a ninja cannonball. And that's not a <laughs> sentence you will ever hear ever again in your life, but he, he's a ninja cannonball and he bounces out of the room, does a ton of damage, and he can actually shoot a projectile, knock you into the projectile, which then knocks you back into him and do a three shot, which can kill you if your HP is that low. In the, um, you know, in our randomizer, it's sort of like one of the spots you kind of dread, you know, oh, am I really going to be able to beat him? Because he, he can, um, we made sure in the randomizer that he is kind of the boss that you're, that you're kind of dreading to beat. Mm -hmm. um, one of the fun parts. And he's coming up next. So Sabera, that, so all of the bosses, these first three bosses in the fortress, um, all of the fights that you um, hear are supposed to be refights. So you saw that the green guy, we did fight him earlier, um, but the witch that we beat earlier, um, we, did, we skipped her fight by that ghetto flight glitch where we flew across the ocean. You're supposed to kind of do this real long dungeon, but it turns out you can just fly over the sea and skip it. And that's really the most perfect spot to skip for the speedrun because all of the enemies in her area just give no experience. There's no density whatsoever. Like, you would just have to sit there and do the jellyfish grind longer. <laughs> And this right here, uh, this is actually an RTA viable trick. I saw really? you do this in the task. Uh, I learned to do this with my eyes closed. Wow, um, okay. There, there's an audio cue that you can use. Um, and so I, I've never done it after the spider. So how precise is it? It's, it's, isn't it like like two it, or three frames? It's frame frames? perfect. It's frame, it's like, okay. It's frame perfect. Um, but when you jump, it goes ba-doom, ba-doom. And right okay. after the audio ends, you can jump again. The problem is that uh, the timing can change if you land on a platform. Like you have to walk oh, forward a little bit. So really, RTA, you're only gonna get that first jump. Uh, and it saves like maybe six or seven seconds waiting. Okay. You um, could go to the side of the of the, of the the hall so that you're not, you, you know you're not gonna land on the platform. Uh, you can, but you still only get over like that first one, like really consistently. Okay, and that was the fun fight. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Mado again, Ninja Cannonball, done and one and done. Yeah. Um, yeah. If if you miss that jump, uh, it says only thirty minutes here, but it, it's like forty minutes in the actual run, so you're losing a, like three quarters of an hour of your life just because you didn't do one frame perfect trick, <laughs> or you could lose six seconds, uh, and it's fine. Just lose the six seconds. There's more time saves to be had. So here we're using the paralysis spell. Um, the reason is these skeletons, normally you hit them once and they like collapse and you can't hit them again until they sort of like reform. That's how you're supposed to beat them. But it turns out that if you paralyze them, their, um, their iframes go down to nothing. You can just keep stabbing them. Um, these slimes here give the most experience out of anything in the game, if I recall correctly. That's right, yeah. Um, so... Yeah. But they only congeal, so I'm kind of manipulating my luck to make them congeal. It's something like a 1 in 8 chance, basically. Um, they kind of like check the RNG every 16 frames, I think. And, um, and then there's like a 1 in 8 chance, basically, that they'll, um, that they'll congeal. So we just skipped an item that was above him that's the highest power-up for the Thunder Sword. Um, and normally, oh, we, we skip it in the real run, too. That's right. And, Ow. you know, at the time I made this run, that, that wasn't how it was, but... 
Yeah, I, I, I copied a lot of things from this test. I'm like, he doesn't need it, so I don't need it. I'll, I'll do what yeah. the robot does. I was pretty impressed. And a lot of them, I kind of wonder, I, I, you know, I didn't think you'd be able to do this in real time. But, I mean, yeah, you guys figured out how to do it somehow. Yeah, the Carmine fight that just flew by in a flash, uh, it's one of the scarier fights in the game because he can start off shooting, like, this ringed projectile, which will go through your barrier if you're close enough and turn you into a slime. And there's only one way to get out of it, and that is using a Fruit of Repun, which you get as an item from uh, beating Sabera, thankfully. Yeah. And then you use it, heal yourself, uh, and you go on, but it's a big time loss. And uh, the like second to last boss in the game has that same attack. And if you get hit by that in that fight, your run's done. There's nothing you can do. Oh, you just yeah. have to die and start over. So it's always really scary. The, um, so the... The hit detection on that barrier is kind of weird. Like, um, so the barrier spell, it it's it it deletes the enemy projectiles when they hit it. But the thing is, if the enemy projectile either spawns on top of you or it spawns on um it kind of like it has to hit the barrier and not you, and then it gets vaporized. However, if it kind of if the if the projectile is going really fast and it goes through you, it goes through your barrier and hits the barrier and you at the same time, it's gonna hit you. you you're gonna have priority over the barrier. So um, you kind of have to be careful with it. Um, one of the things you can do is just back away from an enemy. So that's the, like kind of the trick to deal with that is if you see him using his, his nooper beam, you've got to back off. Mm -hmm. I don't have the reaction speed for that. I just cross my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> So entering the Sahara Desert, we're going to be coming up on some scorpions. And this uh, section in your task was actually the first thing that I looked at. And hmm. it's the thing that really made me start uh, looking at this task. Because there's three scorpions here. Um, and you get four. And <laughs> sometimes I would get two. And I was like, how is this possible? Like, what is he doing? Yeah. Um, and from that, I was able to modify my behavior. So I would always kill the first scorpion, grab the coin, and just like wait a beat. And it would increase my chances of uh, getting a scorpion. And from there, like it kind of snowballed just watching each section in the task. Like, okay, what does he do and can I replicate it? How often can I replicate it? When do these things spawn? And I was able to know from whether enemy A spawned if enemy B would spawn. And that scorpion grind that you did there was so much faster. <laughs> The um so and you would normally grind longer because uh, coming up ahead there there are more enemies in this game um, you know those spiders those are pretty easy to or the the scorpions they're pretty easy to kill these uh, mummies not so bad especially you know you can kind of push them along um, but later on there's going to be the warlocks um, yeah. and they uh, they're they give you a lot of experience but they're really nasty and they have that nooper beam yeah. Uh, so you want to avoid them. You want to avoid them at all possible. Uh, and there's basically three routes you can take in the run. Um, you can uh, you can either try to kill six of them, three of them, or one of them. And one of the warlocks is always free, but uh, the rest of them are always quite dangerous. And Dragon Dark, he is uh, braver than I. He, he always goes <laughs> for the uh, killing six warlocks. But I found it wasn't a huge time save uh, to do that. And it would basically have to go perfectly. Yeah. And it could rip your run. So I would always go for the three warlocks if possible. I if feel like it always warlocks. depends on how the scorpion spider grind uh, plays out. Like sometimes you get in the scorpion spider grind and like you, uh, you, you kind of get near the door at a certain experience level. Um, of course, I'm tweaking it. You see, I did skip one of them. But, you mm -hmm. know, there's all sorts of tricks you can do here to... Um, get yeah. these guys. Those and those last... guys, they're really dangerous. They hit the hard. The last three you killed before the door. Those were the free ones. Everything else is a run ender. Yeah. Every single one. Yeah. Um, they hit hard. They shoot that beam. The beam can hit you when you're flying. Um, and it uh, turns you into a slime, which is pretty much death. Um, and they take a lot of hits. You can only hit them with the weakest sword, the Sword of Wind. Um, and... You know, but they give you enough experience that you can kind of, you know, get this level up. And here's the real run ender. Tell us a little bit about how this guy works, because <laughs> you opened our eyes to this. Yeah. Um, so, Dragon 2. Um, so, the first fight, you've got to use the Bow of Truth. 
um, you can stab him if you keep if you start if you let the fight play out. It'll look the same as the first fight. Um, you can keep stabbing him, but you can't do anything. Um, you won't you won't be able to kill him. You've got to use the bow of truth. Um, if you don't, it's actually like he's healing every single frame. Um, and then the big dragon, you're using uh, barrier to block his um, to block his shots and get in close and stab him. So in you normally you would use like the thunder the thunder sword, and um, so you could kind of like stay away, use this thunder sword that kind of is a full screen attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the kid strats. That's yeah. how everyone beat him as a kid. So you know what someone pointed at Asa recently was if you beat the brown robots and then go down a level on the tower, does it They all it, respawn. They all respawn. Okay. I think yeah. in the it got changed in the rando so that yeah. yeah, it got changed in the rando so that if you beat the brown robots and then go down then you get to go up the ne up the tower. Yeah, I uh, I, I looked into this quite uh, a bit, looking okay. for tower skips, uh, and you can skip uh, levels. You can do that, but nothing spawns, including the next exit. I see. Um, so I wasn't able to find a way to actually skip. So like all of those robots that you just saw him kill, uh, you'll notice that the TAS has one HP. Like the TAS <laughs> has one HP. Um, we wear armor here. We wear the best armor in the game, and it's still dangerous. We still menu for health. We menu for barrier. Um, and the traditional method was using the thunder bracelet. But uh, now that we're using the sword, super dangerous, except for this guy. So there's a reason why I didn't equip the armor. Oh, and this is going to be time. Time. 4035. So, um... The, the reason why we don't equip the armor is because the psycho armor that we pick up has this healing effect. Um, and every time it heals you, it lags. So uh, if we had equipped that armor, we could have taken some extra damage boost, but we would also taken on lag every time it heals us. Um, and so it's better to um, skip, the, uh, skip the damage, uh, just kind of not equip it. And Almost deal with makes it. me wonder if I should try that. I haven't tried that one yet. How much lag? <laughs> how much lag does that cost? It's one or two frames every time it every time it heals you. Hmm, that could add up. Yeah. Um. Yeah, looking at the leaderboards right now, like the the old speed run, uh, or the old task that the, this obsoleted um, is actually slower than my sum of best uh, currently. To give you an idea of how fast this game has. Uh, accelerated how many glitches have been found how many shortcuts and skips and just the optimization of grinding and movement and a huge part of that comes from this task if not directly uh at least having us look in the right places like oh well he skipped this enemies because he could do this can we emulate that and uh so i want to thank you for making that task and especially for your lewis script that let us <laughs> see like when enemies are spawning where their actual hitboxes were because we would get hit so many times and just say, well, how could that happen? That's oh, yeah. impossible. Now yeah, the hitboxes are really wonky on a lot of enemies. Um, but yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, this was... Jeff Peters. <laughs> Jeff special Peters, thanks. special thanks. Yeah, we, we actually do want to thank Jeff Peters. That's um, right. The only guy with his full name there, but if it wasn't for Jeff Peters, this game would not have been localized. He was actually the guy who did the push for it. Huh. So forever special thanks to Jeff Peters. That's this game right. was originally called God Slayer, but uh, even before ESRB, they they scrubbed all the religious references. The uh, the people, uh, the little like dwarf rabbit people and oak, uh, in the God Slayer version, if you translate it, uh, they uh, say things like "I believe in God." Do you? And oh. then you kill the bug, and then they call you God. Uh, so <laughs> they scrubbed they scrubbed all of that. I need to play through this more in Japanese. I've been, you know, I've been working on my Japanese and I played, you know, some of my, some of my old favorite games and, and uh, but uh, I've got to get through God Slayer. Yeah. This is one of my favorite games growing up. Uh, I have the cart sitting next to my like TV and NES permanently. Just uh, like Taskbot here. Just like Taskbot. Uh, it's one of my favorite speed runs and like if you actually go back to the old like speed demos archives forums, you can actually see me talking to Dragon Dark in like the early 2000s saying like, <laughs> hey, I think this is a time save here. And it's pretty funny going back and finding that <laughs> randomly. I was like, oh, hey.
I was See, thinking about this a while ago. It's a really, yeah, it's a really deep game for speed running, which is one reason why, you know, it, it's such a such a good one to kind of come back to regularly and, um, you know, and look at Tasses and uh, and play the rando. I really love the rando. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah there, there's, there's not enough time, uh, especially in a task, but even a speed run, there's not enough time to talk about all of the subtleties and the oh, little yeah. things that you have to do. Because uh, every little piece of movement you do is... It has a purpose. Like yeah. You're constantly thinking about the timer, like, okay, this enemy didn't spawn, which means the next enemy's not going to spawn, so I need to like do a little circle around two times, and now he'll spawn. <laughs> yeah, those sort of things are really tricky to kind of like see. Um, and But, you know, there is a lot more information. If you look at this run on task videos, um, there is a commentated run, a commentated version of the run, you can also load up the Lua script. Um, I've got uh, the Lua script linked on GitHub. Ooh, it may not run, uh, it may not be able to get it, but if you look at my GitHub, the Axeman 301 on GitHub, um, it'll be like a crystalless task, and you can load um, a Lua script from there that you can run this task through on FCUX, just like we just did, and you'll be able to see like hitboxes and all sorts of other things um, kind of like what I did when I made the run. Um, so yeah, it's been, uh, as kind yeah. of like a programming experience, this was also really good. Yeah. Th this run is fantastic. Like it, it doesn't look like it's fun because you're like, oh, you're just grinding. And like, that doesn't seem very fun, but it's not grinding like in an old JRPG where you're just walking back and forth and pressing A a bunch. Like you're constantly thinking and adapting. Oh yeah. Um, there's there's a lot going on in those grinds, and you have to try to optimize your movement using visual cues whenever you can. And for um, a task, a, the the optimization yeah. is even crazier because I'm looking at like every aspect. You know how You're good can I do? Um, I have to say, number. this is like I spent way more time working on this task than any other task I've made. And so, I mean, this is pretty much like my like you know my magnum opus task. I would say. Um, yeah, I like. And it's still not. I, I, it's still not perfect. I would say, like, no matter how many glitches are found, like, if I were you, in the back of my head, I'd be thinking, should I wait? Is there going to be oh, one yeah. more glitch or optimization? <laughs> I don't want to do this again. I every know. Little change would just change the rest. Even of the by run. the time I finished, like, I had discovered a few things. Were like, oh, if I went back, like, um, I could have used uh, telepathy or telekinesis to um to glitch up the mountain on the on the ice mm -hmm. and so you know i could have like done things like kept the uh kept my sword charge glitch and glitched the wall and you know gotten through the walls without having to kind of go back and get the the key after beating the boss things like that yeah. i really want to see if there's a manip or using telepathy to get the wise men to give you mana because occasionally they just give you free mp uh, and it's just a little bit more than what it takes to use telepathy. It wouldn't help in the task, though. But if you ever find that, let me know. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. The but task... if you watch this, uh, if you watch this run and you thought this game is neat, uh, it's a pretty good casual experience, uh, especially if you look at the instruction manual like they expected you to, and it kind of shows you what to do. Um, but casually, you can play the game, and you can also play the rando. You don't have to race anybody. You can just play it yourself after you've learned the game, and it's a ton of fun. Um, there's tons of like guides and resources that you can find on speedrun.com about how to actually speed run it. And, uh, like getting sub hour is a totally manageable goal. It doesn't look like it looking at the leaderboard, but you absolutely <laughs> can. If you just sit down and like, uh, put your nose to the grindstone, a lot of the runs on the board are pretty old, um, and don't have all the new strats in. So watch the tutorials and then give it a shot. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much to the Axe Man, and thank you to uh, Jeff Peters and all the other makers of Crystalis. Um, yeah, actually, it's funny. I, I looked it up uh, for any Nintendo Switch owners out there. Uh, if, if you have Nintendo Switch online, this game is available on their uh, NES platform on there. So you can try it out for uh, nothing extra if you've already got that service. So, All right. Thanks for having me. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Overswarm. Thanks, guys. Thank <laughs> you.